Hello, and welcome to the Folklore and Fiction Podcast. My name is Kelly McCath Morin. I'm a PhD candidate in the Folklore Department at Memorial University of Newfoundland, and I'm also a speculative fiction writer under the pseudonym C.S. McCath. The Folklore and Fiction Podcast and Dispatch synthesize these passions with a focus on folklore scholarship aimed at storytellers. You'll find the Folklore and Fiction Archive along with the rest of my work online at folkloreandfiction.com. Interested listeners will find a link to the current dispatch in the show notes, where a more comprehensive record of this episode can be found, including a bibliography and other references. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast was first published as a newsletter in January 2020. I'm recording it as a supplemental podcast now so that new listeners and subscribers have an opportunity to engage with the material. In it, I'm discussing rites of passage with help from scholars Arnold Van Gennep, Ellen Dundas, and others, discussing rites of passage in fiction and providing you with storytelling insights related to the topic. Rites of passage are customs underpinned by the beliefs that inform them, much as myths are narratives about the beliefs that inspire them. This understanding of folklore genres as flexible or slippery is an important one, and it's often examined in folklore scholarship. As I move into a second year of genre discussion, I plan to mention these crossovers when I see them, so that you can begin to think in multiple ways about the topics I present and bring that thought process to your creative work. Alan Dundas writes that although Arnold Van Gennep had little experience researching and teaching in a university, his analysis of ritual made a tremendous impact upon scholarship in several disciplines. Before this analysis, rituals were often categorized by type, which produced sets of birth, marriage, death, and other sorts of rituals. Van Gennep changed this methodology with the realization that most rituals share the same threefold sequential structure. 1. Separation. A ritual or the part of a ritual in which a person departs from the old way of being. An example of this might include a marriage proposal and acceptance, which signifies the intention of individuals forming the proposed partnership to leave behind their lives as single people. Ritual activities associated with separation might include removing old clothing or embarking on a journey. 2. Transition. A ritual, or the part of a ritual, in which a person exists between the old way of being and the new. An example of this might include the period of betrothal before marriage, when individuals forming the proposed partnership come to see themselves and be seen by society as a couple. Ritual activities associated with transition might include bathing, or the period of travel between the beginning and end of a journey. 3. Incorporation a ritual or the part of a ritual in which a person arrives at the new way of being. An example of this might include a wedding in which the marriage of individuals forming the proposed partnership is publicly affirmed. Ritual activities associated with incorporation might include dressing in new clothing or reaching a destination slash returning from a journey. Rites of passage socially mark a person's movement from one status to another, but it's important to note that social changes and any biological changes they mark are different things. For instance, a child isn't usually baptized at the moment of birth. Baptism happens later at a social event. We can take from this that rites of passage and the life transitions they mark are separate but related. Van Gennep also points out that his subcategories are not developed equally across all cultures or in every ritual, Separation rites are more important at funerals, transition rites during pregnancy, incorporation rites in marriages, and so on. Still with me? Great! This is a complex topic, so I'm going to change gears now and apply it to a single fictional example. The excerpt that follows is from Terry Pratchett's excellent novel, Monstrous Regiment. In it, Polly Perks pretends to be a boy in order to join the army of Borogravia and locate her brother Paul. This episode of the Folklore and Fiction podcast is a preview, and you can listen to the full episode on the Folklore and Fiction website. 
Just click on the dispatch link in the show notes or go to folkloreandfiction.com and sign up for a free account. Thanks very much for your interest. Copyright 2019 to 2023. Kelly S. McCath Morin. All rights reserved unless Creative Commons licensing is specifically applied.